Hey everybody, I'm Amber, welcome to my channel. Today I am sitting down with you and I'm giving you my 24 week pregnancy update. So today I'm actually like just turning 25 weeks. So the update will be 24 and a little bit of the 23rd week, but the bump shot is going to be a 25 week bump shot. So let's just get right into it. So I use two different apps and I always just think it's funny um, to see the different, I guess like foods that they use to compare to the size of the baby. So Flow says that at 24 weeks, the baby is the size of an eggplant and Ava says that the baby is the size of a large popcorn. So that's where we're at. Um, we've got a large size popcorn going in here. Ava says that the alveoli, I have no idea what that is, have developed in your baby's lungs. These little sacs are where the respiratory system connects with the blood vessels of the circulatory system. Okay, that's what it is. The alveoli are responsible for transferring gases, oxygen, and the waste product carbon dioxide. The lungs are also producing surfactant. Surfactant, learning all kinds of words today. A substance which helps make the alveoli more stable and helps to reduce the surface tension of fluid within the lungs. It's with these developments that your baby becomes much more viable outside of your womb. They're also now making white blood cells which can help to ward off infection or disease. These are important developments to keep your baby healthy after they're born. Their brain waves are activating their auditory and visual systems and the vision is improving. From week 24 onward, if your baby were to be born prematurely, most doctors would do everything in their power to ensure their survival. Born this early, your baby would likely require intensive medical intervention and a long stay in the NICU. Every day and week they stay on the inside greatly increases their chance of survival and lessens the likelihood of complications. Okay, so that's good to know. I actually did not read the 24 week update like at the start of 24 weeks so this is the first time i'm reading it usually the second that i like i said i guess turn like a new week i usually immediately open up the apps and like want to know what's going on but for whatever reason last week i just never got around to it so this is an update for me as well okay so on to my symptoms i have had two cravings in the last couple of weeks the first one is a Subway sandwich. Oh my gosh. I love Subway. I'm not like a big fast food person really at all. Um, I much prefer to cook my own food, but I love Subway. I have loved Subway since I was a kid, and that's probably partly why I love it so much because I just have like really fond memories of going on like a weekday where my parents were busy with like my mom or my dad to get um, a BMT. That's like the only sandwich I've ever really gotten from Subway, but that sounds so good. It has sounded so good, but I'm just, I'm too afraid to actually go get it because even though I know the chances are so small of getting Listeria or Listeria, but with deli meat, like there is a chance. And I've read so many threads on Google and like Reddit of women saying that they had Subway throughout their entire pregnancy and it was fine, but I don't know. I'm just like, but what if I'm that one? So I have not actually given into that craving, but that is one craving. The other craving is watermelon. Um, Alex bought like a mini watermelon from the grocery store and he cut it up and we were eating it and oh my gosh i didn't really like have the craving until i actually had the watermelon but once we, once he got that watermelon and we started eating it we have been buying watermelons consistently since then so we like basically always have watermelon on hand right now it is just so good and refreshing and hydrating like oh, i just love it 
there is like some construction going on outside. So if you hear some weird noises, that is what that is. Just is what it is. That is one of the fun things about living downtown. Another symptom that I've noticed is a intermittent dull ache in my nipples. Um, I did experience like some breast tenderness in the first trimester, but then uh, for the most part in the second trimester, it's gone away completely up until the last like week or so. Um, but it's not my entire breast. Like it's just an occasional uh, little ache in my nipples. So that's been interesting. And actually, as I've gotten closer to 25 weeks, I've like noticed that less and less. I also have been having small waves of nausea, again, intermittent, and usually it's when I'm like starting to get hungry or when I haven't eaten in a while. So I'm really trying to like stay on top of my snacking game, you know, like having breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then like having little snacks in between that and in between those meals. Um, but Definitely some small waves of nausea. I actually did uh, throw up the other day, but I'm, it's because I was hungry. Like I waited a little bit too long to have breakfast. And by the time I actually got around to cooking breakfast, it was like, it was just way too late. And so I did end up throwing up, but there really wasn't much to come up because there wasn't really anything in my system. So the next two things aren't really symptoms. They're kind of just two things that have happened. So the first is that I have kind of started to feel a little bit sad about the fact that this is like the last time for a long time that it's just going to be Alex and I. And he actually pointed that out. He was saying that he's excited for baby to come, but he's also just really trying to like savor this time, you know, before it's over. And of course I know like, more than likely we will have this time again in like 18 ish to 20 years um, but yeah i'm excited for baby to come but i don't know every here and there i just kind of get like a little bit sad that you know that this period of our lives is over i don't know it's like a weird mix of emotions um really really excited but i'm trying to also just like really enjoy these last few months where it's just me and him before everything changes hopefully in a super good way i'm sure it'll be in a super good way but yeah the next thing is that i had a huge dehydration scare so i do have a reusable water bottle that i take with me places um, and when I go to work, like when I go into the office, I take it with me and I usually am really good about drinking water, but I've been noticing lately that I'm not good about drinking water when I'm at home. And partly it's because since being pregnant, plain water for the most part just like doesn't sound good. It's not a full blown aversion, but it's definitely kind of up there in the aversion realm. Like, I don't know. I Plain water is just, it doesn't disgust me, but like I don't want it as much as I, as much as I used to. And so anyway, last weekend I was just like really busy throughout the day and I wasn't drinking as much water as I should have, but like I didn't feel dehydrated. So Alex and I went to one of our local like plant shops and we were walking around, we were looking for um, like a flowering plant and we were there for a little bit because we also were picking out pots and we were standing in line and I love this plant shop, um, but the people that work there are like very, very chatty and so sometimes when you're in line, it like takes a while to actually you know, check out because they will like talk to every single person that they're checking out. So we were standing there for like a few minutes and we're waiting and I started to get cramps. Like it felt very similar to like menstrual cramps, like as if my period was coming on. So I started to get cramps. I kind of just ignored it and was trying to like breathe through it. And it 
was getting to the point where I was like pretty uncomfortable. So I handed everything over to Alex and I told him like, you know, can you check out? I'm going to go sit in the car. And as I was walking to the car, I felt like I was going to pass out. And I have passed out quite a few times in my life, not recently, but I used to pass out pretty regularly when I was younger, um, when I would get my period from, um, from the pain. So I know what it feels like when you're going to pass out. And so I was walking to the car, my vision started getting like super, super blurry. And it was kind of at that moment that I realized I have not had water really like all day and the car was just like right there. And so this was actually not a good decision. I probably should have just like sat down um, on the sidewalk where I was, but I was like determined to make it to the car, which I did. It just was not smart because I really felt on the brink. And if you do pass out while you're walking, you are going to fall and hit your head. And I have done that before. Um, and I ended up with like a swollen puffy eye the time that that happened to me. So that's why I say it probably wasn't the smartest thing, but I did make it to the car. I sat down and, uh, and then I started to kind of feel a little bit better. And then of course we got home and I drank a lot of water, but I did purchase a new item since then. Um, so this is my, at home water bottle now and it's got like the little you know not that this really does anything but it kind of has the little timeline to keep you on track so I don't think I'll take this one out because like I said I'm pretty good about like drinking water when I'm out um, with my re my other reusable water bottle which like fits in a cup holder this is not fitting in a cup holder this is 64 ounces and I feel like this is just working out better for me because like I said, plain water at home has kind of been a struggle for me. And so what I've been doing with this is just adding in like some lemon or some watermelon, you know, just something to like add a little bit of flavor, which I was doing anyway. But the problem with being at home and using just like a normal glass is that, you know, a normal cup is like maybe a little over eight ounces or so. And so every time I would finish it, then I would have to like squeeze more lemon or something like that and that's not that big of a deal but I guess I was just getting kind of lazy and not wanting to do that and so in turn I was just not drinking water but this way I can just flavor my water for the entire day and just keep this near me and sip on it all day and so far it's been helping so this is what we've got now actually I'm gonna take a drink now that it's right here I also have noticed that my belly button is starting to pop out just a little bit. It's like just at the very top. Honestly, it looks, it looks like two little like, like from looking down, it looks like little butt cheeks or something because it's starting to just like slowly, slowly come out. But it's not the whole thing. It's just like the top portion. I also am noticing that my belly is looking a little bit more hairy um, and I think that I, I mean I'm assuming that like there's always been hair there and I've just never really paid attention to it but it does look a little bit darker than before and I don't know maybe I'm just noticing it more because obviously like my belly is starting to protrude more and more but oh and a big one a big one in the 24th week is that baby's movements have been getting so much stronger that it's starting to keep me up at night. Not every single night, but there definitely have been a few nights where we lay down and we go to bed and they're like kicking me or moving or whatever they're doing is like so sharp and sudden and consistent that it actually, like it doesn't hurt me, but it actually like makes me kind of jump. And so there were definitely at least a few nights where I was just laying there and I was like, there is absolutely no way that I'm going to be able to fall asleep while they're doing whatever in the world they are doing in there. So that's been like an interesting one because it's cool. It is cool to feel these like more intense movements, but at the same time, I'm quite tired at the end of the day. So when I lay down to go to bed and it's like, nope, nothing's happening, it's like, 
just a tiny bit frustrated, but I'm sure it's only going to get worse. Um, so that's been interesting. The last thing is that we did have a prenatal appointment two days ago and baby's heart rate was 145 to 150. So I've been like trying to pay attention to the heart rate because there's all these like, like, oh, if the heart rate is this or if it's this, then it's a boy or a girl. But every time we go, I feel like it's so different. Like it's been in the 160s, it's been in the 130s. So I don't know if that means anything, but I will be filming a gender prediction video. Um, oh, actually, no. No, I think the gender prediction video might already be out by the time you see this. So definitely keep an eye out for this. For that <laughs> that is everything so I'm going to go ahead and show you what the bump looks like all right friends that is all I have for you today thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.